Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dungeon Fog again. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Blueprint tool. The Blueprint tool is specifically useful if you are trying to recreate maps that you use in pre-constructed campaigns, or if you're sketching your drawings out on grid paper, you can scan those images, import them into Dungeon Fog's editor, and begin recreating them and sketching them out using Dungeon Fog's textures and assets to help you bring your maps to life. I'm going to be expanding a little bit on what Till covered in his December update release video. What we're going to be focusing on is where we find the Blueprint tool to start. So if you select your Select tool up here, a new section will appear with a button that we can click to either hide or show our blueprints. Now since we don't actually have a blueprint uploaded on the map yet, we are actually going to do the first step and actually import an image into Dungeon Fog. In order to do that, we're going to click on this box down here, and when it's highlighted in orange and you click on it, a new dialog box appears. Now before we get started on actually importing a map into Dungeon Fog in order for us to edit, what I want to describe to you first is this layout right here that you can see. Now this grid space here, that is the grid that is highlighted in orange, is reflective of these squares on your map. So if we go over to the resize tool here, which is identical to the resize tool that I covered in a previous tutorial video, you'll see that my map size is 15 by 16. That means it is 15 squares long by 16 squares wide. The function of the Blueprint tool is to align the grid lines from the image that you're importing to the map size that you have. And there's a number of ways that we can do that. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually upload an image. Now I've gone ahead and already uploaded an image that I've copied from a previous map I've done using the modern assets. But if you upload an image, only JPEG or PNG images will work. When you find the image that you want to work with, you simply upload it into the database here, and a list of all of the images that you've uploaded will appear in this box on the left. Now when you highlight and click, your image then gets imported onto the map that currently fits the size of your grid space. Now there's a number of quick tools that we can use to try to align the grids on the image to the grids on the map. We can try to rotate it counterclockwise, doesn't quite work. We can try rotating it clockwise, doesn't quite work as well. We can try having the image fit the map pixel size, as in it's already set to 70. And again, that's just the number of dots per inch or dots per square. So we can try that. Mm. We can see the image kind of has exploded here, but we really can't see the full scale of the image, and our grid space doesn't quite fit. We can try fitting the image to the map, at which point the image will then be compressed or expanded to fit the restrictions set forth by your map size down here. However, you can see that my lines still don't quite match up. Well, we can try a number of tools. Again, aside from using these tools on the bar here, we can try using the control and mouse wheel function to see if we can get our grids to align. You can see that my grid isn't quite aligning with where I want it to be. Kind of getting there, but not quite. But that's okay, because we have a number of tricks up our sleeve that we can use. If we need to make any fine adjustments, we can hold shift to move the image around the map as we need to. That disables the snap to grid feature down here. If we need to pan around the image to see how it's aligning with our grid space currently, we can hold the right mouse button and navigate around the window pane to see how our lines are matching up. If we don't like the current aspect of the image or we've made some changes that we don't really like, we can always just reset the translation and rotation. So we're back to our map. Now, I did mention that there was a way that we could do some extra fine tuning to get our grid lines aligned. And if you hold down the Alt button, 
not only do you notice that a new crosshair appears, but we also get a new set of tools that we can use, such as using a 3x3 grid to create a scale that we can then work with. So we're going to zoom in again. We'll hold Alt, and we're going to pick this corner right up here, and we're going to trace a 3x3 grid that's going to align with the grid lines on the image. So when I click down there, I'm going to just drag a 3x3 grid like that, seeing how much I can get them to align as perfectly as possible. And then when I release, that has now forced the grid lines on the map to align themselves to the image. I zoomed our image back out just to show you guys something else that we can do before we even start drawing our grid lines down. And that is, if we press and hold the Alt button, then we can actually begin to rotate the image in a smaller rotation, rather than doing a hard 90 degree like we would do with the, the rotation counterclockwise or clockwise, what we can actually do is move our new crosshair over to a corner of the map and begin rotating it. Now what the program will do is it will use where the cursor lies as an access point to spin the image around on. So let's say for example I move to the center of the image it will then begin rotating the image from that point either counterclockwise or clockwise depending on whether or not I'm moving the mouse wheel up or down. But you can see that there's still a bit of overhang. My image doesn't quite fit the scale of my map. Well what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the resize map tool over here and we can either try to manually increase the size of the map to see if we can capture all of our grid space and you'll see this white line here that is the confines of the image itself as shown by the white outline down here. So what we can do actually is we can just force the map to fit the size of the image by clicking this button down here. So when we do that, you can then see that my current map size has shifted to 20 by 16. Not only are my grid lines perfectly in alignment with each other, but there you see that now the lines of the image and the lines on my map are in perfect alignment. So I can go back to my blueprint tool and when I'm done making all my necessary changes and adjustments to my grid and my image lines, then I can apply that blueprint to the level that I'm working on. So when I click apply, you'll see that my image has now appeared. You can now see the image slightly transparent on the level that I'm working on. So now what I'm able to do is I can then begin to trace out lines along that image to start recreating my map. And the good thing about the blueprint tool is that it's always going to be layered on top of what you're drawing. So it's always going to be there for you to use as a guideline as you're reconstructing your rooms. However, if you want to check and see how your image is matching up to the map that you're producing, you can change the transparency by making it more opaque and at that point as you're increasing the opacity you can see that my room lines that I've drawn down here have vanished. Now you can still keep drawing if you feel confident enough that you, what you're drawing is a perfect representation of the map you're trying to recreate. However, if you're not 100% sure, you can always make it more transparent and then continue drawing and placing your assets to coincide with the image that you're trying to recreate. Now the blueprint itself is only going to remain on this level. I would caution you to not alter your map size when you're using blueprints. Once you get your image locked into a map size that works for the image you're trying to recreate, stick within those confines or else any other map levels that you've previously done, if you start changing the map size over the course of the entire map that you're doing, all of your images and assets are going to shift. It's just the way Dungeon Fog aligns all of their assets and grid lines in the program. So changing your map size continuously while you're using the Blueprint tool is not advised. However, what is advised is using the Blueprint tool.
Before I let you guys go for this tutorial video, I just wanted to thank everybody who's been subscribing to the videos so far. I'd like to thank Till and his team for giving me the opportunity to do these videos for you guys. I think that you're seeing a lot of benefit and I'm seeing a lot of benefit by doing these videos. I think it's enhancing all of our experiences with this program. So I wanted to thank you guys for subscribing to the channel, joining us on Dungeon Fog and getting involved in the community, which they are very active in on their Discord server, which you can access via the Dungeon Fog homepage and then jump into the server from there. I'm usually on the Discord server as well, so feel free to message me at BG Simplified if you're ever looking for me in the Dungeon Fog Discord server. Feel free to comment on any of my videos. If you have any direct questions for me, I'll get back to them as soon as I possibly can. I'm active on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Feel free to find me on any of my social media handles, which are all listed in the description of every video that I do. And I will see you all in the next video.